Welcome to this short overview of the Resuscitation Council's 2015 guidelines. I'm Jerry Nolan, a consultant in anaesthesia and intensive care medicine at the Royal United Hospital uh, in Bath. And I'm also lead for the post-resuscitation care guidelines. I'm going to focus on urgent coronary catheterization and percutaneous coronary intervention following out of hospital cardiac arrest, titration of inspired oxygen concentration after return of spontaneous circulation, targeted temperature management, prognostication of outcome in the comatose post-cardiac arrest patient, and regionalization of post-cardiac arrest care. It's now widely accepted that patients who have ST elevation on their ECG after being resuscitated from out of hospital cardiac arrest should be taken for urgent coronary catheterization and percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, if indicated. It's estimated that up to 80% of these patients will have an acute coronary lesion amenable to PCI. The patient's conscious level should not be used to determine their el eligibility for urgent coronary catheterization, or to be absolutely clear that the patient is comatose is not a reason to deny immediate catheterization. Several studies have shown that in the postcardiac arrest patient, the 12 lead ECG is unreliable for predicting the presence of an acute coronary occlusion. Postcardiac arrest patients with a likely cardiac cause of their arrest, but who do not have ST elevation on their ECG, should be discussed with a cardiologist so that they may be considered for urgent coronary catheterization. There's currently no consensus on this approach and it's the subject of ongoing research. Low blood oxygen values or hypoxemia are harmful and must be avoided in the postcardiac arrest patient. However, there are animal studies that indicate that high blood oxygen concentrations or hyperoxemia early after return of spontaneous circulation may be harmful to cells, particularly neurons that are recovering from a severe hypoxic ischemic insult, such as that caused by cardiac arrest. The data from human observational studies are conflicting, but there's now good evidence that after acute myocardial infarction, too much oxygen can increase the size of the infarct. Until more data are available, we recommend that once a reliable oxygen, uh, arterial blood oxygen saturation can be measured, either by pulse oximeter or arterial blood gas analysis, the inspired oxygen concentration should be adjusted to achieve an oxygen saturation in the range of 94 to 98%. Hyperthermia is associated with worse neurological injury after cardiac arrest. It's common in the first 48 to 72 hours and it must be avoided. This requires active temperature control, or now the preferred term is targeted temperature management. A recent study, the so-called TTM trial, showed that no difference in neurological outcome when a target of 36 degrees was compared with 33 degrees in post-cardiac arrest patients. For this reason, current international guidelines recommend that these patients are controlled at a constant temperature somewhere between 32 and 36 degrees for at least 24 hours. The previously recommended target range was 32 to 34 degrees, but following this recent TTM trial, many intensivists have elected to use 36 degrees as their target temperature. This higher temperature reduces the need for vasopressor support and shortens the rewarming phase. Identifying the comatose postcardiac arrest patient who will ultimately make a good neurological recovery is very challenging. In the past, prognostic tests were applied too early and reliance was often placed on just one type of test or modality. In many cases, this resulted in inappropriately early withdrawal of life-sustaining treatments. The new guidelines recommend that prognostication is generally delayed until at least 72 hours after return of spontaneous circulation and that multiple modes are used. These include clinical examination, electrophysiology, biomarkers, and imaging such as either CT scanning or MRI scans. A prognostication algorithm summarizes these steps, but should be applied in practice by, only by highly experienced clinicians. The need for 24-7 access to a cardiac catheterization laboratory has driven increasing uh, regionalization of care of post-cardiac arrest patients. These so-called cardiac arrest centres, or particularly in the UK, heart attack centres, will increasingly take a greater proportion of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest patients. Some observational studies have documented better outcomes from this regionalisation of post-cardiac arrest care. In summary, the main changes in post-cardiac arrest care 
are firstly to consider urgent coronary catheterization and percutaneous coronary intervention following out of hospital cardiac arrest of likely cardiac cause. Once arterial oxygen saturation can be measured reliably, you should adjust the inspired oxygen concentration to achieve an oxygen saturation of 94 to 98%. Targeted temperature management is used to prevent hyperthermia. Prognostication of outcome is delayed for at least 72 hours and must be multimodal. Finally, post cardiac arrest care is being increasingly regionalised. The full Resuscitation Council 2015 guidelines can be found on the Resuscitation Council UK website, along with video summaries of all the other sections.